Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we are dealing with some new bullshit. How original of us. We're gonna be talking about the world of modeling. More specifically, some of the more tragic and worrying aspects of that modeling world and more, let's say the fashion world as well. But here they'll go hand in hand and you'll see why. Quick thing, we are going to be talking about eating disorders, extreme thinness generally, drugs. So if that's not for you, please click out of this video. Catch you at the next one. I came across this article just by my introduction. I'm pretty sure you'll know how I feel about it. We're going to talk about it nonetheless because some of what's in here is not only mind-numbingly stupid, enraging, and completely in my opinion, incorrect, but it's a discussion worth having. And that's the saddest thing about this article is that there's a discussion right there and they're not having it. It's like looking at a painting and instead of talking about the whole painting, you're focusing on the tiny little corner instead of the big picture and the more important discussion. So that's what we're doing today since apparently journalists don't know how to do their jobs. That's another rant we're gonna save for another day. Bye bye booty, heroin chic is back. I don't think I need to really comment on the term heroin chic. I think we all know how I'm gonna feel about that one. Any kind of vogue type term that's related to drugs, trying to glamorize drugs, glorify drugs, make drugs seem like some fashionable trend, like it's a new handbag. It's not for me. I think it's stupid and that's really that on that. From Uggs to low-rise jeans, the fashion world is seeing a resurgence of questionable trends from two decades ago. Now it seems as though the thin, heroin chic body of the 1990s and early aughts is also making a comeback. In early October, Bella Hadid closed out Paris Fashion Week at Coperni, her tiny form nearly naked on the runway as a dress was spray-painted onto her skin. Days later, at the Miu Miu Spring 2023 show in Milan, Wayfish girls paraded down the runway with bared midriffs, some of them modeling the micro mini skirt for which the label has recently become known. Meanwhile, supermodel Spawn, such as Lila Moss, daughter of Kate, and Kaya Gerber, daughter of Cindy Crawford, are further evoking the 90s with both their famous moms and their supremely svelte figures. Not everyone is happy about the trend. I don't know what I'm missing here. I truly do hope I am missing something because otherwise this is truly really fucking grim because it's pretty simple to figure out why people aren't necessarily happy. One clue could be, why are we calling this heroin chic? Do we really need that term? Can we not use a new term? Do we have to relate it to drugs which are notoriously related with the fashion industry? Do we need to underline the fact that there are a lot of unhealthy behaviors in the fashion industry if we're not actually going to discuss them seriously? That's what I was talking about earlier when I say that it's frustrating and that we're just looking at the corner of the painting instead of the big picture. Because if we're gonna talk about heroin chic, Let's talk about drug abuse. Let's talk about eating disorders. Let's talk about things that put people's lives in danger for their jobs, for an aesthetic, to look a certain way so you can keep your job, so you can keep your weight at the lowest, so your ribs start showing. These are all things worth discussing, but if we're gonna oversimplify them, I think it's almost best to not discuss them because it truly is a disservice to flatten it out to, oh yeah, it's heroin chic, it's like the 90s. I'm sorry, that is just a level of fuckery I'm not here for. Now, if you've been here for a while, you know that I have a bias here and I'm gonna voice that bias now so you can take it into account and take my opinion for what it's worth. I've had issues with eating disorders, being bulimic specifically, so I am cutthroat about these things. I am cutthroat about how you talk about them, how it's socialized, and specifically how women, because that is my experience, are treated in terms of issues to do with food, appearance, body image, and body dysmorphia. I'm not gonna let this journalist catch a break with this one. Sorry, not sorry. So it's nothing new that models are extremely thin, extremely wayfish, which is the term that was used here. As we well know, and this article will bring it up in a second, there has been a resurgence of the curvy girls. So women who have a different hip to bust ratio, women who are heavier than these wayfish models. That was a trend for a while. It seems like that trend is dying down again. I also don't like using the term trend when we're referring to people's bodies because it sounds a little weird to say that someone's body is going out of fashion. It's a little bit grim, frankly, but that is the reality of 
the fashion industry. We see models with a certain body type, that body type will thrive for years, and then guess what? they're nowhere to be seen and we're back to the other body type. If I use trend here, it's just because it's the term they're using. Not necessarily one I'm a fan of, but I can't really find the right one either. The skinny sashaying down the runway are a drastic shift from the slim, thick, and body positivity that had been in vogue in recent years with womanly ambassadors such as Lizzo, Megan Thee Stallion putting their bodies on display. Even the famously bootylicious Kardashians seem to be turning away from curvy physiques. Kim and Chloe are looking increasingly skinny of late, leading fans to speculate that they've reversed their Brazilian butt lifts, though has never been confirmed either had procedures to begin with. At the Met Ball in May, Kim boasted about shedding 16 pounds in three weeks to fit into Marilyn Monroe's iconic dress. Experts say the new obsession with thin isn't limited to the Hollywood and Fashion Week crowds. Now that high fashion runway brands are putting skimpy clothes on the runway for restrictedly scrawny and bare women, it trickles over to fast fashion brands in the matter of days or even hours, high fashion blogger Hunter Shires, aka High End Homo, told The Post. The next minute, the clothes that suit lanky girls are all over your For You page, Instagram feed, and Twitter timeline. There's a lot here to be discussed. Now, I really do think that the way in which this article was written, and I'm gonna say this for the last time because truly I could repeat it a billion and it would still apply. The way this article is written, in my opinion, is somewhat irresponsible simply due to the surface level of this commentary. Now, perhaps the New York Post is not here to be enlightening, philosophical, and really make you think about anything because truly the only thing I can think here is Okay, can we talk about the more serious subject at hand? This is the equivalent of someone giving you the news and being like, hey, two buildings were bombed. Anyway, next thing. You're not gonna talk about what happened. You're not gonna talk about the victims. You're not gonna talk about the repercussions. You're just gonna say something and go. That's what this article is doing. There is an increase of celebrities looking skinnier rather than what we referred to prior with the slim thick. And the slim thick thing is also part of this discussion simply because being slim thick or whatever you want to use as a term for that body type, it was also very gate kept in the sense of being that body type meant that you had curves, but also that you had a flat stomach, but also you would have probably a larger ass area and a larger boob area, but still the flat stomach. So this type of proportion is very difficult to achieve because realistically, a lot of the times if you're thick, it's not like you can just choose for your stomach to not have any fat there and for it to be flat. It comes down also to genetics. So that type of body is also rare, you know, as much as you can say that the wayfish body type is rare. The distribution of fat like that doesn't just occur to everyone and it's not attainable for everyone unless we start talking about plastic surgery and that's another discussion. I do think in their own ways, both of these body types are not representative of the average and that's okay, they don't have to be, but we also need to talk about the implications of these body types, some of them including eating disorders. So Kim Kardashian losing 16 pounds in three weeks to fit into Marilyn Monroe's iconic dress. People can do whatever they want with their bodies. Does this send the right type of message in my opinion? No. If you want to lose weight, if you want to gain weight, if you're doing things for your own health in a moderate way, as in you're losing weight by working out, changing your diet, whatever, that's your business, go for it, good for you, okay. What we're talking about here though is the extremes of body changing, body modification, whatever you wanna call it, of diet, of excessive exercise. If you are going to go to the extremes such as not eating or working out too much, and it goes in the opposite direction too, eating super unhealthily, eating too much, both of these are not only gonna obviously cause health problems, but mentally, you are going to be unwell. So when we talk about losing all this weight all of a sudden to fit into a dress, there's this kind of reinforcement of going to this extreme and for what, really? in this particular case, so you can fit into Marilyn Monroe's dress, so you can wear it for a night on the red carpet? Was this weight lost in a healthy way for your own sake? Or is it because there is a constant narrative that you're supposed to look a certain type of way, so you have to lose this weight, so then you can fit into this dress, and so then you fit the ideal feminine? I'm just gonna leave that there. You can come to your own conclusions about the answer to that question. Anyway, the obsession with being skinny, 
I was alive in the early 2000s. I remember low-rise jeans, unfortunately. It was a very dark time in fashion. I don't want that to come back, and frankly, I would rather just never wear jeans again than go back to low-rise. I'm sorry. There are some hard limits I have, and that's one of them. On Instagram and TikTok, the hashtag Thinspo has been banned and now redirects users to mental health and eating disorder resources. But similar hashtags such as Fitspo, What I Eat in a Day, and Body Check abound. Studies have found that eating disorders, particularly among adolescent girls, spiked during the pandemic. Whether the ideal is thick or thin, the constant is a focus on size. In 2017, Emma McClendon, curated an exhibition titled The Body, Fashion and Physique about the idealized fashionable body at the museum at FIT. McClendon told CNN of the show at the time, whether it's contemporary or 19th century, we as a culture, as a society are obsessed with size. It's become connected to our identity as people. I agree that the fashion industry has a lot of problems, endless problems, very deep-seated problems. However, as we're focusing on the body and health and so on, I'm just going to refer to that here. As much as I enjoy fashion, I don't really watch runway anymore for the specific reason that I am uncomfortable with the constant pendulum swing of the ideal body of said year, years, decade, whatever the case may be, mainly because I would like the fashion to be about fashion because if we're going to talk about clothing, accessories, whatever it is, I want the clothing to speak for itself. I don't want the clothing to have meaning, to be beautiful, to be interesting, to be innovative because someone thin is wearing it. The same way I don't want it to say something because someone slim thick is wearing it or someone of any other body type. I do not want the body type to dictate if something is fashionable or not. If the thing is fashionable, according to you and your own standards, I want it to stand alone. I think fashion should stand alone and not rely on the body type that's wearing it. If you need a certain body type to make your fashion stand, your fashion is trash. I'm sorry, that's just what it is. Because if you can't create a piece of clothing that's beautiful enough that you need a very particular type of person to wear it. Someone who is weight X, tall Y, hair color Z. Then you're just making a dress for a specific person. At that point, you might just have one copy of each dress that's meant for person whatever, because that's not fashion. The whole point of fashion is that you're taking something and making it to some degree, because obviously based on your body shape, some things are gonna look better on you, flatter you more, sure. Let's not pretend that isn't true. The same way that if I were to have yellow hair, I would look sickly, trust, I've checked. So I'm not saying everything suits everyone, of course not. But there's a very big difference between getting something that suits you and that flatters you versus something that only flatters like three people you saw at a party doing cocaine last week. If it's just them that you're thinking of when you design clothes, we've got a problem, right? Is that really talent? Or are you just catering to this very specific group because that's all you know how to do? I'm genuinely curious. The last thing I'm gonna say about all of this is that if we even just put fashion aside for a second and we just talk about eating disorders, drugs, things that you do generally that relate back to the body. We have to stop feeding this narrative of the ideal body. And I know that's a very easy thing to say and it's a harder thing to practice or put into motion because realistically, how do you stop magazines from saying this is the ideal body, I wish I looked like this, blah, blah, blah. How do you stop people on social media? Because I mean, at some point you also get to censorship. So we're talking about a long and complicated discussion. That being said, we can also try a little better to promote health over body size. If someone is wayfish by nature and they're healthy, whatever, dude, fine. If someone's slim thick and they're healthy, fine. But can we put the health part before the aesthetic part? Can we just start by doing that? Can we worry about being well and not getting sick? Can we prioritize that instead? Can we do that instead of thinking, what's the hip to bust ratio? Like how tall is this person? What do they look like in digitals? Like all of this shit truly is important because obviously the fashion industry is an aesthetic industry, but at the same time, no matter how pretty the dress is, if I know that this person is basically killing themselves on a daily by not eating, by doing drugs so they don't eat, 
in order to fit into the dress, that dress is automatically horrible. I'm just gonna leave that there. Anyways, guys, you can let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think this is gonna lead to a resurgence in eating disorders? Not that eating disorders disappeared by any means, but do you think this will contribute to people getting potentially more obsessed about their weight again? contributing to pulling more people into a disordered eating mindset and drugs too, actually. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and we'll catch you guys next time.